Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, to the channel IT Simplified. In today's lab, we are going to create a self hosted integration runtime and copy the data from our on prem location into Azure Blob Storage. Like always, if you're liking these sessions, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this content. So, let me show you. I have a machine which is on-prem and in order to achieve this lab, I have very small data which is in CSV format. It's under the fo folder with the name My Folder. And if I can show you inside, it's very small data that I have which has a username, identifier, first name, last name. So very basic information and idea is that after we install the self-hosted integration runtime, we want to move that from our on-prem location into Azure Blob Storage, all by utilizing Azure Data Factory. So with that, what we're gonna do is, we're going to move to step number one, which is to create a data factory. So I'm going to search for data factory in the Azure portal, and let's click on the create button. Every component I'm going to put in the resource group with the name ADFRG. And I'm going to give this a name and this name has to be unique. And I'm going to deploy this in Canada central location. Version two is the latest one. I don't want to configure any Git repository. And for the networking, if you want, you can enable manage virtual network. But in our case, we are talking about self-hosted and I will connect via a public endpoint. I'm going to take all the other settings as default. Let me review and create. And whilst it is creating, let me just go back to my Azure Data Factory. Actually, before I do that, let me also create a Blob Storage account. So my data factory was created successfully. And if I can show you, I'm going to refresh the page. So it's right over here. I'm going to open Launch Studio. It's going to open a new tab. I'm going to close this. I'm going to expand so you can see all the options. So you have Home, Author, Monitor, Manage, and Learning Center. Let me just go to the Manage button. And if I go under Integration Runtime, you will see by default, it creates an auto-resolve integration runtime. But in our case, what we want, we want to create a self-hosted. So for that, I'm going to go to New. And I'm going to pick the first option. Let's go and continue. And here you can see uh, I have this option of Azure or self-hosted. Now in our case, our data is on-premises. So I'm going to pick this one. By the way, this is used for in case your data is only within Azure Cloud. Also, you want to move the resources or move the data between resources which is hosted in Azure. So in our case, it's hosted in on-prem. So I'm going to pick self-hosted. And you need to give it name. If you want, you can give a description and let's go and click on create button. And uh, in order to set up, I can use option one, which is an express setup, or I can also do this manually. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to pick express setup and uh, we're going to run this small executable. I'm going to run this as an administrator and it's going to integrate this runtime and we are using an express setup. So it is on the machine on which uh, my data is sitting. You can also optionally deploy this in a machine. The only thing is that it should have a network connectivity where your data is hosted. So it's going to take some time and while this is getting deployed, let me just go and utilize time. I'm going to create a storage account and it's going to be a blob storage account.
and the deployment is straightforward. We have done deployment of storage account before too. You just need to give a name. Pick your location. I'm just going to make it locally redundant. Rest everything. I'm going to take default and let me just review and create. And in this storage account, I'm going to create a small, con I'm going to create a container and I'm going to name this as input container, or just let's name it input because that's where our data are going to land from on-prem. So that is perfect. Let's go and see where that express setup has reached. So it is still getting installed. So let me just pause the video in the meantime. Welcome back. The setup has completed successfully. So let me just close this and uh, let me go to my data factory studio and I can go and close this now. And let me just refresh the page. Okay, it's still showing me error. So let me just go and just make sure that integration runtime is running or not. Okay, so you can see that it has now changed to the green check mark. So this is great. So our integration runtime was successfully installed. Now moving to next step, what we're gonna do is we're going to create a link service. And for that, I'm going to go to manage. And let's go and click on add new. I'm going to search for file system. Feel free to give any name you want. You can give a description and connecting via integration runtime. By default, it uses the auto resolve integration runtime, which is created by default. But in our case, we have to use the on-prem integration runtime, the one that we just created. And for the host, you need to give uh, the path for that specific shape we want to copy from on-prem into Azure Blob. So let me just go and show you. So as I said that uh, I have this small CSV document under my folder. So if I can go and show you, this is the one I'm talking about, right? And it's in my C drive. So if I can go and show you the properties of this, I've already shared this. So you're going to go and share this right and you need to give this path so i'm going to copy this path from here and provide it here and for the username it's going to be the credential for my server Okay, excellent. And let me just try to test the connection here. Okay, it says the connection failed. Let me just check. Okay, because I didn't give the username correctly. So I'm going to change administrate.
Okay, so connection was successful and let's go and click on create. Okay, so it has successfully created the link services and now moving to the next step, we are going to create a data set. And for that, we're going to go to author and go on, click on these three dots and let's create a new data set. I'm going to use the file system and this is in CSV format and let's give it a name. And for the link service, we're going to pick the one that we just created. And let me just browse to the file, which is username CSV and it's okay. And I'm going to use first row as header. So basically if I can go and show you the file one more time, The row I'm talking about is this username, identifier, first name, and last name. So this is going to be the one which I showed you first row as header. And rest everything you can leave to the default. Let's go and click on OK. Beautiful. And now let me just go and uh, validate. Okay, so it validated successfully and I'm going to publish this. Okay, so it has published successfully, so that is good. Now, now what we're gonna do is we're going to create another link service by going under manage. And to, let's go and click on new and this time we're going to pick the blob storage because that is where we want the data to be copied. Let's go to continue and again give it a name. Pick your specific integration runtime and authentication type is account key you need to select the subscription under which this storage account is sitting and the name of the storage account let me pick this this is the one under which we created So let's click on create. Okay, so this link service was also created and now we're going to create the data set. So very similar to the first one that we created, we're going to go under author and let's create a data set here. going to pick CSV format and you need to give the name for your data set and under link service is going to be blob link service and I'm going to give the file path and this is going to be the container which we created which is with the name input and click on OK and you can just pick first row as header and let's go and click on OK now. All right, I'm going to just validate and it has been validated and let's publish this. All right, so the data set was published successfully and now let's go and do the final step which is going to create a pipeline. 
And for that, again, staying under author, we're going to create a new pipeline. I'm going to name this my pipeline 108 and under activity, let me just try to search for copy here. I'm just going to minimize this so that we have more space. And I'm going to copy this. So we have to specify the source and the sync. So the source is our on-prem uh, location or on-prem data that we have. And we're going to sync this with our blob storage. So you can give the name copy data one is selected by default. So I'm going to leave that to the default, but the important step is going to be the source. So our source data set is on-prem data set, right? And under the sync, I'm going to use the blob data set. That's where the data will be synced. And under mapping, we're going to import the schema and if you go under settings, so the integration unit time, that is where your charge will going to come into play because that's the compute by default, it is four, but if you want, you can change that to the number you want, right? I'm going to leave that to the default because this is just for the demo purposes. And uh, let me just debug and run. Okay, so you see the name of the copy data was copy data one, and it says the, and it has been time span, stamped by the run start, how long this took to run, and the status was successful, and we can go and cross check by going into our storage account, and we have got this file from on-prem. And if you want to see what's inside, you can go and click on edit. And here we go, we have the data from our on-prem location, which can further utilize this for our purposes. So this is how you're going to use self-hosted integration runtime for copying the data from on-prem into Azure Blob Storage. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for